Hello, and welcome to James Lester's Express Lane. Today, we will not be doing a review, we'll be doing a list. Five best games you may have missed. What's number five? Glad you asked. Number five will be Africa. Game for the PS3. You take the role of a photographer in Africa. You'll get emails from, say, a professor saying he wants the shot of a giraffe eating from tree level. So you'll drive around in a Jeep, find some trees, climb up it, and wait for a giraffe to come along. Others are a bit more exciting though, like getting a crocodile up close. With that, you gotta buy the RC car, get your camera close, but not too close because the crocodile will attack it, and get the perfect picture. The better the picture, the better the grade, the more money you make. I was hoping more games like this would come out, like say, Sports Illustrated, the magazine, video game, where you're a photographer and you gotta recreate certain shots like Michael Jordan doing the dunk or something. The closer you get, the higher the grade, more money you would make. But nothing like that came out, unfortunately. This is just a fun little game, decent graphics for the PS3 early on, and just nice relaxing experience that's different from most games, which is what I liked about it, because it was different. 8 out of 10. What's number 4? Number 4 will be Soma. Soma on the PS4 is in the same group as Outlast. No fighting, just run and hide. What's the enemy? Robots. But, for some reason, they think they're people. You're in an underwater lab, in the future after a meteor hit, and you're trying to figure out what's going on, how you got there, and of course, how to escape. The ending is really good, storyline overall, really good. I just like the fact that there's no fighting, like an Outlast. So again, out of 10. Number three will be I Am Alive. I Am Alive, which I played on the PS3, is a survival adventure game. After some cataclysmic event, they never really state what it is, you finally get home after walking from the East Coast to the West Coast. You find your family's not there. But then you find a little girl. You take her to where her mom used to be, but her mom's not there. You find a radio, you follow the radio to somewhere else, and you just keep doing this and doing this and finding food, finding water, finding first aid kits. But along the way, you'll find people who need help. This person needs a first aid kit. They're very rare. But if you give them a first aid kit, they'll give you something. Generally, a retry. What's a retry? Unlike most games where, oh, you died for the 27th time in a row, well, we're just going to go back, no, two minutes to the last checkpoint. This one, it'll do that for the maximum amount of retries you have. Start off with three every chapter, and as you use them, you lose them. But you can gain them back by helping other survivors. Most I ever had at once was about six retries, and it was a good thing too, because, man, some of these things can be super tough. Like the first three hours of the game, I found maybe five bullets in total. Thankfully, you don't always have to shoot. Guy comes up with a machete, you pull your gun out. He doesn't know if you have bullets or not. He doesn't know if you're going to shoot him. Walk over to him, get close enough, stab him with a machete. Again, really good game. The art design was different, mostly black and white with some color here and there, explained by the dust that's always in the air. The ending, kind of weird, but still good game, especially it's super cheap right now. Easily give it an 8 out of 10. So, what could be number two? Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Graphics, 11 out of 10. Storyline, 11 out of 10. Walking mechanics, 4 out of 10. This is the very definition of walking simulator. Because that's all you can do is walk. No run, no sprint, no jump. Walk. But the stories you come across are amazing. There's a bunch of lights floating around. When you get close, sometimes you hear audio, or if you move the right stick around, a visual will display, but it's made of all lights. You don't actually see the people, but you see that like the, line, the light outlines of them along with the audio playing. My favorite story was the third person you follow, and it's just amazing how he goes from who he was to what he becomes by the end. And it's, I don't want to give spoilers away, it is an amazing game. It only takes about four or five hours to play, and if you can handle the just walk, walk, and then walk some more, 
but get through the storyline and the visuals are amazing. Easily give this game a 9 out of 10. Finally, number one on game you may have missed out on, Kingdoms of Amular Reckoning. A little RPG made by Kurt Schilling of Red Sox fame and the state of Rhode Island. How this game didn't make money, I have no idea. It's huge in depth. When I was playing through, I got to a scene and I'm like, this is a better Final Fantasy game than Final Fantasy XIII. Don't get me wrong, Final Fantasy XIII was gorgeous. Best graphics I had seen in that generation. But it was a hallway. You walk 10 feet, you get a cutscene. You walk 12 feet, you have a fight. You walk 13 feet, another cutscene. Gorgeous hallway, gorgeous cutscene, but a hallway. When I think of Final Fantasy, I think of world maps and chocobos and side missions, which 13 didn't really have. Kingdoms of Amular has that and more. And the DLC, and it's not $19.99 for no three different skins, so your character looks different. No, it's like $9.99 for huge extra maps. New storylines, new quests, new equipment, new everything. This game, I just don't know how it didn't make money. I put in about 75 hours into it before I beat it. Loved it. And highly suggest you go out and get it. It's on the PS3, probably 360. Probably no more than 20 bucks right now. The DSL is super cheap as well. Get it, get it, get it. 9 out of 10. Heck, 9.5 out of 10. It is just an amazing game, and I'm just sad to see that it do better. As always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.